Hey, welcome everybody to Developing and Using Ratios 3. This resource is called Transitioning Activities and it picks up from where the entry level activities finished in the last session. Now this resource builds on the content that was in the previous resource, Entry Level Activities. It's going to transition the learner towards working with more complex ratios and really I think that this resource is the transition between the fundamental understanding of ratios and the more complex understanding. It's going to center around two types of ratio questions. The first one is finding the whole given a part, and the second one is finding a part given the whole. And you're going to understand what those two types of questions are in a moment. And finally, this activity is designed to be quick, effective, and interactive. Now the plan, and as uh, George Foreman says, you know, plan your work and work your plan. The plan is to transition the learners from using uh, the post-its and so on to be able to deal with more complex ratios like mixing petrol and oil mix, putting together uh, ratios for drench or for sprays or whatever it may be, you know, that are at a higher level. So we're really transitioning them from the basic stuff with the post-its and what you're going to see here today, moving them towards the more complex. Now the content and questions in this resource follow a really basic pattern. They begin by being easy. We want the learners to have success and to feel like um, this is easy and they can do this. And then we're going to ask them questions that extend them just a little bit further. Now generalizing is when they recognize a rule or a pattern within the work that they're doing and they're able to apply that to more complex problems. Problems that they can't model with equipment. And this will become clear as we go on. Hey, just a quick word on equipment. You can use whatever you like for this kind of activity. Uh, I sometimes use black and white marbles from a $2 shop or stones. Anything you can get a lot of. Sometimes I chop up pieces of paper as well and use it. Anything goes, anything that you can get your hands on that are two different colors and you can get enough of. Now here's the first of the type one questions and this is an easy question. Uh, they have the ratio in front of them there, uh, one to two. And we ask them, if you were to have three orange parts, how many blue parts will there be? So if we have three orange parts, how many blue parts will there be? And we want them to play with the material and use the material to work that out. So they might just place the three parts there and for each of those three, they would add two blue ones. And so they're just saying, okay, the ratio of one to two is still the same, but this time the numbers are increasing. Now we want to uh, ask them an extending question. So we ask them the next question. If we have six orange parts, how many blue parts will there be? So now we're just increasing their numbers a little bit. So they have to look at what they've got on their desk there and they have to think, gee, if there were three of them, we know that there are six blue parts. So if there's six of them, what's happening? What's the relationship? And we're hoping that they're seeing that it's the twice as many relationship. And they might just model it, which we want them to do as much as possible to model it at the stage. And then you could have a discussion about what they've done and so on. Now moving on to the generalizing questions, we want to ask them a question that they can't model necessarily themselves using the equipment they've got. For example, they might not have uh, enough pieces of paper or whatever to do it. So we want to extend them and make them think a little bit more mathematically. If there are 15 orange parts, how many blue parts will there be? And so they have to think, gee, uh, if we've got six for this many, how many will there be for 15? And then you, you realize that they have to begin to make rules and look at patterns and come up with interesting ways of working it out. And while they're doing that, they're actually developing connections about the relationships between the ratio. They might come up with an example, like they might figure out that the rule is that the number is always times by two, for example. And so they might generalize this out. And usually this happens in most classes or a few people in a group will get it and the others will begin to understand as they go on. If you can model it, do so. I end up drawing things on the board or trying to put it together for them. But if you can model it, uh, not everybody has to do it and they can see it, that yes, if there's 15 orange parts, uh, there'll be 30 blue parts, 15 multiplied by two equals 30, then that's great, you want them to see that. Now that's an example of the type one questions. That's simply where you tell them uh, if one part is orange, how many parts will be on the other side and so on. They're the easier questions and now we're gonna move on to the type two questions. So here's an example, we'll use a one to three ratio. If you have four parts all together, how many will be orange? And this often is just a different way of thinking for the learners about it. You know, it just frames the question slightly differently. And there they go. And so hopefully they'll make that out of the resources that they've got and see it. You want to follow it up with an extending question. If you have 12 parts all together, how many will be orange? Ah, so now they're beginning to see patterns again. 12 parts, well we know we've got four there, so perhaps they increase it again 
and again until they get 12. And they can see that three of those are orange, the nine of those blue. So again, we're extending their thinking. So here's our generalizing question. If you have 100 parts all together, how many will be orange? And you know, this is going to really challenge the learners. They're going to have to look at those relationships and think, we know that perhaps one quarter of them would be orange or not. We're not sure, you know, but one fourth, maybe they're thinking one fourth. And so the things they might discuss might be around quarters, how many fours are in a hundred. And basically you can just sit back and listen to the kind of conversations they have and you'll be able to get an idea of what they're thinking. It's more than likely they'll be able to do this, generalize it out and so on. The reason we're doing this is it's going to set them up really well for mixing sprays and working with the liters and milliliters and so on. Just to summarize, uh, this resource, you know, builds on the previous content and entry level activities, progresses from easy to expanding to generalizing and prepares learners for more complex ratios. In the next clip, we're going to have a look exactly at how to think about uh, mixing 25 to 1 or 50 to 1 and engaging your learners in more complex thinking. Mm -hmm.